Hey, yo, this is your boy 4G, and I'm checking in with my girl Tampa on Industries Most Wanted. I was told I'd never be nothing. Beaten up by too many Karens. Most of my exes were heartless. But team of she's very caring. Like the same she's got fairing. Why Karen is clearly I'm caring. She's a selfish little devil. No comparing as your boy Aaron. What's going on, man? It's your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Podcast. Boom! Big shout out to 4G in the building. What's going on with you? Uh, What up? What up? Hey, it's good to see you. It's a pleasure. It's been a while. It has been a while. It's time for us to, you know, to do an update, get things back popping. Um, But without further ado, go ahead and give us that official introduction. Hey, again, uh, this your boy 4G, and I'm chilling here with my girl Tap on Industries Most Wanted. Uh, you know, just got a lot going on right now. We can dive in and, you know, like I said, let y'all know what's happening right now. Facts, man. Um, go ahead and, like, break it down for us a little bit, you know, so people under- people who aren't familiar with 4G, you know, um, break it down us a little bit. Tell us what you do in the music industry and, and a little bit about what you do outside the music industry. For sure, for sure. So, uh, I'm an Atlanta native, uh, by way of Panama City, Florida. Uh, moved here a little over two or three, two three years ago for the most part. Uh, I am a hip hop artist, slash author, slash actor. I am the CEO and founder of my independent label, Grandmaster Entertainment, which was also founded in Panama City, Florida. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, out here, you know, out here in the Atlanta streets, you know, just trying to. You know, continue to make my mark here, and yeah, that's what it is. Man, that's what's up. Um, definitely staying active, staying busy. You and I have been having great conversations since we met. Um, definitely, you know, you're an actor. Let's talk about that just real quickly, and then we're going to get into the music thing, you know, because I think that's how you and I really became familiar with each other yeah, is yeah. because of the out on the limb. Big shout out to o- Okarike and Regina. Yeah, shout out. Did you what's, up, what's up, fam? Yeah. yeah. Did you see that they're getting ready to start their next film? Yeah, yeah. I was The Stop and Shop? Yeah, I actually wasn't able to make that second audition or whatever. But, yeah, salute to you all. Uh, I definitely know you finna do major things there for the most part. So, yeah. 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 That's that's a blessing right there. So while we're on that subject, let's just go ahead and just dive into that real quick. Um, you know, we're gonna talk about all the music you got going on, but how did that position came apart or that role came apart for you, you know, being <laughs> in out on a limb and tell everybody what part you played. <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is about to get real interesting but all from the old slot. So on a real, like um uh, I actually played the role of a pastor. And uh, what was crazy about the whole situation is on that particular day, that was just supposed to be an extra. Yes, Lord. And uh, so I'm like, I can do that there. A yeah. Wor- a worship scene. You know, I've been you know, <laughs> I raised as a, you know, a little church board or reverence God and pretty much everything that I do. However, as I'm driving over there that morning, um, I heard a soft voice say to me, said, you're going to be doing something entirely different than what you thought wow. you was going over there to do. And so... I'm one of the type of individuals, like, I check in with God daily. So I'm like, you know, Lord, is that me or is that you? Yeah. And I, and I heard the same soft voice say, you can be doing something entirely different than wow. what you thought you was going Look over at here that. to do. Look at God. I said, okay. <laughs> so on my natural corner of mine, I'm like, I'm going to sit up front. I'm going to make sure I'm on this camera. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I pull up, and uh, the first one there, literally. And uh, after a while, you know, people start trickling in and, uh, you know, Finally, uh, Daryl, the caravan, he comes in along with a few other individuals. And uh, so finally he says, you know, hey, whoever drives this Jeep in this other vehicle, you know, I need y'all to remove it over to uh, this particular remote location. I'm like, okay, cool. I come back. And so when I walk back in, he said, hey, bro, come here. He said, what's your name? <laughs> and uh, I said, Jay. He said, well, check this out. He said, the guy who was supposed to play the role of the pastor just backed out on us. He said, can you play the role of the pastor? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I, I, I literally, I kind of laughed in his face. He said, what's so funny, man? I said, bro, I said, you won't believe me if I told you. Yeah. And that's that's kind of how it happened. So my first movie credit came, you know, just like being in the right place at the right time. And he said to me, though, he was like, he said, hey, look, bro. He said, well, look, if you ever want to shine, he said, now you're time to shine. He said, because Facts. everybody always remember the pastor. <laughs> now, Which is true. Yeah, we actually going to come back to that there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, ironically, um, I really can't say much about um, the new 
um, series that I actually just got cast as a supporting cast for a coming TV series. Oh, nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Um, but real briefly. Yeah. Um, same scenario. Wow. They, they cast me as a pastor. And I laughed and I literally said, I said, God, you funny. <laughs> so you, you funny, God, 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 you funny. Um, um, and what was so crazy about that is, the day before that, I had did a, uh, I was cast um, in this uh, this other ongoing TV series right now, yeah, uh, entitled uh, uh, Wicked City. Okay. Um, and so in the particular. Role, I was supposed to be an extra there too. Yeah. But they asked me, they said, uh, you know, do you want to have this little speaking line? I'm like, yeah. And without going into too many details, yeah. whatever, because I don't think the actual episode is out sure. yet. So I'm definitely going to, you know, make sure I stay within my perimeters or whatever. Absolutely. However, um, when I was given the line, it was one line. <laughs> it was one line. And I couldn't get it. <laughs> but when I thought about it, I thought it was bigger than that. Yeah. You know, you were overthinking it. It wasn't that. It, it wasn't that because just the day before, you have to understand, I had audition. I had an audition. Yeah. I did two pages of dialogue with no problem. Oh wow. But it was it was the 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 dynamics of the particular scene. Right, understood. So Subconsciously, even though it was a great opportunity, yeah, I just think spiritually, I don't think God was having it. Yeah, I think that's I think that was what the because literally as soon as I walked out, uh, you know, I spent like twelve hours there taping or whatever. As soon as I left, I could spit the line off like it was nothing. He intervened for a reason. Yeah. And right after, I mean, they literally, you know, they took the mic off me or whatever. And I believe that was a positive and a negative that came out of that situation because yeah. I told myself, I said, that would never happen again. Yeah. That would never happen again. But I also understood that um, it was for a bigger cause because, yeah. you know, uh, one of the things I learned along the way, they say your brand is the most valuable thing that you own. So, um I'm still trying to figure out what that was all about, yeah. but in my heart of hearts, I think I kind of know from the onslaught what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean, I'm a big, <laughs> big, huge believer that God always intervenes when he's supposed to. Yeah. Not everything is meant for us. Not everybody is meant for yeah. us. And we <sighs> cannot question it. You know, what may have seen on the outside glorious and beautiful Really, God said, no, that's not for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some, hey, it's all good. You you got other things popping. You got other roles popping. Congratulations on all that as well. Yeah. And it's funny you talking about the pastor because um, did you watch the series Snowfall? I have not. Oh, um, well, it just the fifth season just ended and it's done. Like they only did five seasons, but it was one of the dopest series that I ever watched. But it's funny because Snoop Dogg played the pastor in there. And he and always all as well. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> and he always would say, "Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord." That's how I always remember old Snoop. Yes, Lord. <laughs> you know, so it was just funny that you talking about. Everybody remembers the pastor. You know, of course, Snoop's an icon, but he just he annihilated that role. He did so dope, dope at it because you know he's just a dope individual anyway. Um, so let's jump on to the music side. You know, we talked about you know acting and stuff like that. Um, when did music start for you? Oh, man, I was a jit. Um, so. Oh, real quickly, let me say this before I forget, because I'm going to forget. I think um, your voice is very commanding in a good way. Maybe that's why they see you playing the pastor role, because a pastor is somebody that is uh, supposed to, you know, talk to the people and, and, you know what I'm saying, and bring them in and their word, they're given that word every Sunday and Wednesday night and any time that they're, you know, doing their thing. So maybe that's what it is because you got that kind of commanding voice in a good way. I'm just saying. I, I dig that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, uh, I mean, people I haven't spoken to in years, uh, some of my former teachers or uh, some people who actually poured into me when I was, uh, you know, uh, a youngster growing up and so yeah. forth, 
I can call them years go by, and I'll be like, they're like, I know who this is. This is Mr. Gal. It's like, yeah. This, you have a very distinguishing voice. Like, there, yeah, you, you know, do. So, <laughs> yes, I get it. And uh, it's cool and all because, I mean, even on the music side with the way that I rap, uh, my voice is so raspy or whatever, is um, the last uh, producer that I worked with, he, uh, he, he said something very interesting to me uh, uh, as opposed to a lot of the other engineers I had previously worked with. Yeah. Um, he said, man, I don't really want to do much with your vocals, he said, because – they kind of stand out alone. He said, I don't have to really do much with them, you know. Other, Absolutely. You know, other than, you know, obviously, you know, cleaning up, you know, any uh, noise in the background or something like that there. But he, yeah. like, as far as, like, he like special effects, like, nah. You don't like, need a lot of, like, reverb and auto-tune right, and this, right, that, and the third. Because, right. again, you do. You have that dope voice. You know what I'm saying? It's that type of voice that people are going to remember. And that's what you want. You want to be rememberable. You want to stand out from the rest. That part, yeah. But uh, I actually started out writing poems. Mm. Uh, for it, it was roses are red, violets are blue. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just playing. Like <laughs> 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 what it was is um, so back then it, it was kind of like an outlet for me. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of my escape ways to vent or whatever. But I also used to write. Poems for my homies, you yeah. know, uh, to the little ladies and so forth. You know, they thought it was them, but it was actually me all along. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> and I was, I was actually, you know, making money, you know, in high school. You know, my homies would pay me and so forth like that. Deal. But the poems, <laughs> the poems turned into lyrics, and the lyrics turned into songs. Okay. And um, Was that after high school that you were uh, turning in, into music? No, I was actually, so... I was writing I was writing rhymes around age 13, 14 years old. Oh wow, old. okay. Yeah. What were you talking about at that age? So the very first song <laughs> <laughs> So the the very two first songs I ever remember writing were the first one was entitled uh Try a Little Love. Okay. Uh spelled out L U V. And okay. basically uh it was just basically about um Pointing to people in the community, you know, just basically being kind to people. Yeah. Uh, nothing can replace kind of words, or even a hug. So try a little tenderness and try a little love. That pretty much the theme was just being kind to people. Yeah. And the second one, ironically, it was entitled abstinence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I can I can honestly tell you, I wasn't practicing, practicing what I was preaching back then by no means whatsoever. Yes, Lord. And uh, so as a matter of fact, one of my one oh my, gosh! One of my classmates, he said to me, uh, because I in high school, uh, I was in the uh, the media class. I actually used to do the morning news, so a lot of people knew me based on that there. Yeah. And so they played. I did a music video entitled, uh, like I said, "Abstinence," and uh, it actually won us uh, a national competition. Okay. To get a free paid, uh, a, a free all expense paid trip down to Orlando or Hip Hop Center. Yeah. Um. And so they played the video during the morning news or whatever. And uh, one of my classmates, he said to me, he said, yeah, you need to practice what you preach. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but what was so messed up about that situation was back then. So he was openly, uh, he was a non-feminine man. I got you. I, I mean, a non-masculine man. I got I, you. I'm going to just I'll say it like that. And so I'm saying to myself, like, Brian never judged you a day in my life. Yeah, and he was openly gay. We can say it. Right, yeah. But Some people might get upset, but it is what it is. It's, yeah. And you know, I'm like, <laughs> Brian never judged you a day in my life. You cut me sideways. I said, but it's cool. But in that moment, I, you know, I posed the question. I said, well, he wasn't wrong. He wasn't right. Yeah. But I knew back then that, you know, that people typically are constantly always watching you. So, yeah. so when it comes to the music, the music side of things, the things that I put out there, I believe the words that I say. Yeah. You know, and I basically I want to be able to kind of you know walk it like I talk it. Yeah. You know, per se. You know, walk what I'm saying? it like yeah. I talk it. For sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and. Um, I also mentioned that in my book, you know, uh, I, you know, 
I think um, you're already aware of the fact that I'm releasing a, my book on Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah. You're an author. Yeah. I'm a first-time author, a book entitled Bounce Back. Um, I talk about a lot of this stuff, you know, the, the dysfunction of childhood, the, the being judged, ridiculed, yeah. misunderstood. I mean, all of the above, but, you know, uh, through it all, it, it's – all the things that were meant to destroy me or whatever, it, it made me an entirely different animal. And so, like, even now to this day, like, I'm one of the type of individuals, you can't tell me what I can't do. That's right. Because all you're going to do is ultimately is go, you're going to you're gonna tick me off. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm going to make it a point to prove you wrong, you know what I'm saying? Because one thing about me is I don't need man's validation. Yeah. I don't um, – I haven't always been that way, but I just, I don't need the validation of man because I understand who I am. And, and even with that being said, like, even here over the last six months, even just um, just yesterday, um, I was at a, a, um, an acting class. Okay. And so I was with this, uh, this Caucasian gentleman, and uh, he said to me, he kept talking about my facial features and how it looks like a king. Well, just going backwards, probably about three, four months ago, um, I was working at a particular location with one of my coworkers. Yeah. And uh, this young lady comes in. Well, she, I want, I'm going to respectfully call her a young lady. Uh, <laughs> but, but she, she, You're so politically <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah. She said, uh, sir, she said, can I give you a compliment? I said, absolutely. I said, what's going on? She said, has anyone ever told you you have beautiful dark skin? She said, almost, she said, it looks like you can almost be an African king. And so my coworker <laughs> next to me, he says, you're like, what the hell? He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm African. I'm, I'm from Nigeria. Like, tell me, what, what about me? Yeah, what, what's so special about him? And so, <laughs> and so the lady, she said, well, sir, she said, you can tell a lot about a man, based on the way he carries himself, the way yeah. he dresses, even down to the shoes he wears. Yeah. And that particular day there, I was I was always taught dress the part, dress for where I want to go. Yeah. They were all dressed down, tennis shoes, whatever, and I was just being me. And so he couldn't argue with what she was saying, but since that moment there, literally, I've even been out with my wife, and they said the same thing, you know, like, this this whole thing about the 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 word or theme king keeps coming up. Yeah. And I don't think that's just, you know, something random that people are saying. No. Um and I'm gonna get to that, you know, I'm gonna swing back around to that just a moment, um, when we get to another topic. But uh when she said that to me, it kind of confirmed my thought process, what I said initially. I don't need certain people to validate me. No, you don't. We get all of our blessings from God, not yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I think what they're saying is, is that you're going to get casted for the next coming to America. Hey. <laughs> from Zumanda. Uh, from the king of Zumanda. <laughs> That's actually my favorite movie. <laughs> I'm, the first one was phenomenal. The second one, I wasn't as crazy about. Did you see the second one? I did. Uh, it it was, was okay. It was real strategic the way they tied everything together. The only thing that kind of threw it off, even though I know it's, uh, it's TV, yeah. was there's no way on God's green earth that those barbers could still be alive. You know, <laughs> I thought <laughs> that, that, that just wasn't possible. You know what I'm saying? Like They were already old <laughs> yeah. 30 years prior. Right, so, right, so right, they, right. But I kind of like the way they threw it together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dope, yeah. I mean, and it was cool that there was that much gap in between them that they brought it back together. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that I did appreciate. Um, talk to us about your new record that's out right now. My Fatima. Um, it is um, an idea that uh, I came up with uh, after watching the TV show uh, Sisters, yeah. uh, BET, uh, Tyler Perry series. And uh, I never forget it. I will never forget as long as I live. I was sitting there one particular night, and I said to my wife, I said, man, I said, man, Fatima, I mean, she a dope character. Like, she can be a hot commodity. I said, I'm going to write a song about her. Yeah. And she just gave me this little crazy look. I said, look, man. <laughs> I said, 
I am a very creative being. I said, I'll put my spin on it. Yeah. And I'll be 100% honest with you. So when I wrote the song, my whole idea or my motive for doing so initially was to uh, pitch it to Tyler Perry. Yeah. Um, basically, I wanted to pitch the song to them. Yeah. And it wasn't even two weeks later. Um, they put out a post that they were doing a spinoff as a team. And I knew in that moment that I said, there is no way on God's green earth that that idea came from me. And so to me, I was like, man, yeah, this would be a, a perfect opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because um, now when I do music, I do it to make sure that I want to make sure all my music is marketable. Yeah. You know, um, it's all strategic. I'm not just out here just randomly talking about nothing. Yeah. So um, when that happened, I was like, wow. So I called up the other artist who's actually featured on here. And so, uh, I sh- you know, I DM'd the, the post, and she said, get out of here. I said, <laughs> I said, look, man, I think I'm on to something. Yeah. Here. But needless to say, we, you know, we, we completed the project. Um, and uh, it's been doing very well. And ironically... <laughs> Just ironically, I had the amazing opportunity to meet the beautiful Crystal Renee Heislet. Man, so what was that Just, experience like? She was she was so humble. Yeah, I mean, like it was it was surreal. Yeah, like when I walked in, she was sitting over in VIP, and uh, I made eye contact with her. And I was like, you know, can I, you know, get a, And she immediately got up. She, I mean, what was crazy about that, and, and I say that loosely, is because most people had this idea that um, all celebrities are snobbish. Yeah. She was not like that. Yeah. And what made her even more beautiful is when, when we actually had the opportunity to speak, because she was so humble. Yeah. That blew my mind. And that so, makes somebody, like you said, more beautiful when yeah. they have a beautiful spirit and they're humble and she was, they don't have that arrogance. She was so humble. So, Crystal, if you're watching this here, <laughs> I'm still waiting for you to check out that joint. Um, I told I want us to remix it. Yeah. You know, she was she was real humbled by, she like, really? I said, yeah. And once I left, I said, man, like. What are the odds, right? Yeah. And, you know, because she actually sings, too. Yeah. And so I'm telling you, we're going to remix that joint there. Absolutely. I'm going to make it a point. I'm, you know, I got a few uh, major performances coming up. I'm going to try to, you know, get in the mix with that there, you know. I don't know if she probably can call me a little penny, but, you know. <laughs> you know, if, if I don't invest in myself, I know ain't nobody else going to invest in me. So Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what you have to do as an artist. You know, everybody's budget obviously is different because people have bills to pay, right? Right. They got families to take care of, et cetera. But it's like you have to put something into it because if you don't, then it's just a hobby. Time is money. Yeah. And if you're wasting my time, <laughs> you're taking away my time and my ability to actually go out and make money. Yeah, absolutely. And so I get it. You know what I'm saying? I totally get it. And my, and my wife, um, she actually had the opportunity to, you know, me to take a picture with her as well. And she actually posted my wife on her page, wow. on a, a photo recap. So I thought that was pretty dope. That is amazing. Yeah. And, and that, so that brings me back to, like, you don't understand, Tampa. Like, I've been here in Atlanta uh, a little under three years. Yeah. And I have done things that most people only dream of doing yeah. in this city. Yeah. I have... I've done so much movies, halftime performances, and <laughs> I'm getting auditions non-conventional ways. Mm-hmm. Like, all because I made a conscious decision that I was going to make a faith move and relocate down here to Atlanta, which is the real promised land. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I uh, got some things, you know, I want to, you know, uh, implement to this new city here <laughs> in um, the days and weeks to come or whatever. But just coming down here just on a straight faith move and the opportunities have just continued coming. And people say, you know, the sky's the limit. Let me let me put everybody on notice right now. The sky is not the limit. 
There are no limits. That's right. And I'm going to explain that to you. When you get out of space, there are other galaxies out there that we ain't even tapped into. Yeah, it just probably keeps going to infinity. Right. right. <laughs> and we ain't even talking about touching the heavens. Yeah. There are no limits. The right. only limits or limitations that we have are the limitations that we allow people to put on us. Absolutely. There are no limits. That's why there is no man, woman, being, anyone who can tell me what I can't do. That's right. Because you a liar. Absolutely. Everything within our being that comes from other people, it's what we allow. Right. If people treat us a certain way, it's because we're allowing, allowing them to. to do. If they talk to us a certain way, it's because we're allowing them to. We have to put our foot down because we can't allow anybody to dictate you, what you're doing, what I'm doing, what he's doing, none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like we have to stand on our ground. And because you came here on faith and you're obedient to God, that's why he's opening so many doors for you. I'm going to uh, take that a step further. You literally teach people how to treat you. Absolutely. By the things that you allow them to do to that's you. That's right. You, you in the essence saying that I'm okay with this when all actuality you're not. That's right. So matter of fact, I got three words. <laughs> uh, this first time I'm saying this on air. Respect my brand. There you go. Yeah, respect my brand because at the end of the day, uh, like I said, my time is just as important as yours. One hundred percent. I mean, I had the kind of money you have right now, but what I need everyone to understand about four G is. I know where I'm going. Right. You may not believe that, right? But the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> like, like I'm not this little turtle out here on this little. I'm the rabbit, you know. In in, in the race that we're running, I'm the rabbit. Yeah. And and God is redeeming time in my life with things that I've lost. Uh, <laughs> so, just last week, Tampa, I get an email. Saying that my student loans have been wiped clean. <laughs> what? Here's the kicker. <laughs> I ain't even applied for it. What? It just happened. $65,000 $65, gone. I ain't even applied for it. Wow. Just gone. That's a monkey I ain't got to worry about. $65,000 of student loans wiped free. And I ain't even apply for it. Shoot. Hey, we'll take it. That's yeah. a big blessing. Yeah, I ain't even apply for it. That's beautiful. Yeah, so I'm like, when when I speak, I have to remind myself all the time, often, and then, of course, you know, the other artists, uh, Sharifa, you know, of course, you know, my wife and a few other people that yeah. are real dear to me, they they have a way of keeping me in line. I'm going to get to uh, Sharifa in just a moment. Um. Uh, I'm not an arrogant individual by no means whatsoever. I'm a very confident individual. Yeah. There, there's a difference because through the course of my life, for so many years, I was this timid individual who I was I was like a doormat to people. Like I just I saw myself as less than, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Just just something clicked in me. Like that, that's I don't know. At some point or another, just something happened, something clicked to me. Like, no, you're greater than. You're, yeah. you're above, not beneath. You're this individual. I'm made in God's image. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big G. I'm a little G. But I'm made in God's image. And when he, when he literally say that I have the ability to do greater things than what he did. Yeah. That, that alone just... That I mean, if, if people ever just grasp that concept, like, why put limitations on yourself? And I'm not saying go out there and be reckless and, and <laughs> right. you know, you know, give your boss the middle finger. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> nah, you still got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Right. But at the end of the day, you have to always understand that people, places, and things are not your source. Yeah. God is your source. That's right. They're just resources. And so my whole thing is what one person might not do for me, a total stranger will. That's right. And oh, we see a lot of that in the music industry. It's exactly, yeah. And, and, and a lot of a lot of the opportunities that's been extended to me, it's been from people that I don't even know. A hundred percent. I agree. Me too. 
the 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 opportunity I got for the the TV series, I uh, I uh, met an individual in my career outside of my career. <laughs> I ran into him three times in a seven day period. Wow! But where I work, that's unlikely. Yeah. I ran into him three times in a seven day period. And so the third time I met my he says, uh, hey man, do you act? I said, Yeah, I thought I told you that. He said, nah. He said, You were supposed to send me over some stuff. He said, but you never, you know, did. I said, oh, okay, uh, you have about tomorrow morning. And uh, <laughs> like I said, I sent him over and he also uh is a well renowned um uh music producer too. I'm actually working with two dope. Um, music producers right now as we speak. Two different projects yeah. outside of my own. Yeah. Both of them Grammy nominated, you know, uh, working with mainstream artists, you know, people that we only dream of touching or whatever the case may be. So um, just, um, again, just being in the right place at the right time, uh, creating the right relationships, everything is just kind of, Happening in time the way that it's supposed to. Godspeed. Godspeed. I like that. Godspeed. We can't rush the process. We have to trust the process. Trust the process. Joel LeB, one-on-one, that is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, tell us about the young lady that's on the song with you. Sharifa Nyan, dope artist, uh, great vocalist, real humble. Um, she, uh, she stay on me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cause she's a perfectionist like myself. She's in Atlanta. No, she's uh in Texas. Okay, she, got she's you. She's out of Texas. Yeah, she's uh very gifted, real humble, uh, sweet soul, or whatever the case may be, and just very creative. Uh, I actually met her. Um, my wife and I were down in Mobile, Montgomery. I'm sorry, Montgomery. Probably about three years ago. Yeah. And uh, I just heard her saying. And I approached her and, um, you know, just kind of compliment her, whatever the case may be. And um, let's connect. Yeah. And, you know, working at, on a collaboration project wasn't even the thought process uh, from the onslaught as far as, like, uh, the initial meeting or whatever the case may be. It was just a matter of, uh, you know, just – Kind of getting to know her on a professional level. Yeah. Uh, see where her head was at and so forth. And so I had uh, my um, unqualified album release project uh, back in 2019. Um, I flew her down or whatever. And um, she said there, but she said, because you kept your word with me, she said I have a different uh, level of respect Absolutely. and trust for you. Absolutely. Um, That's rare in this business. Yeah, yeah I, did, I did what I said I was going to do. Y'all, because I was always taught the last word principle. Yeah. The last thing somebody say to you, you need to be able to take them at your word. That's at, right. At their word. 100%. And, and, and if you can't do that, there, then there's definitely, a, <laughs> there's definitely a problem. So with that being said, like, um, I kind of put out there what I want to get back. Yeah. That's not always the case, you know, but she's definitely been one of those uh, true individuals. I mean, I got to keep it 100 with you. Like, before I moved down here, um, to Atlanta, I had a whole team. Yeah. Um, I had a marketing rep. I had uh, someone assisting me and my wife. Um, I had uh, social media management. I had a whole team of people. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, their own selfish motives kind of got in the way, and slowly but surely. People started falling off by the wayside because what they began doing is they got off this little boat that was constantly moving Yeah. to get on the big boat with all the bright lights. I know. I've been there. I, I've had that happen <laughs> to me, too. Trust me. That's why I sit alone most of the time. Only to get over there yeah. and realize that that boat just docked. That's right. It exactly. Ain't, it, it ain't going nowhere. That's right. The grass is not always greener. greener. <laughs> it's, it's not. And so I was... Feeling some kind of well about it early on. But I'm looking back now, like, I'm like, thank you, God, because I would rather it had happened then than now all the opportunities that have presented themselves to me now. 
Now I got a bigger problem. Absolutely. I'm a big believer in that, not to intervene, but I've had it happen to me a few times. And at first I kind of was questioning it, but now I see God remove those people because they were not entitled to the same blessings that you are. So he didn't want to provide you with those blessings. A lot of times our blessings being blocked comes from the people that are around us. If you keep certain people around you, God's like, nah, they don't deserve the, your blessings. So I'm going to hold off until they, those people are gone. Once they're gone, the blessing starts pouring in. I'm a believer of that. Yeah, and I, at the end of the day, I don't really feel no kind of way about it. No, no as no, you no shouldn't. More. No, like, you know, um, what happened, happened. I still love y'all. That's right. Uh, but, you know, life goes on. <laughs> but like I said, um, just getting back to Sharifa, she and I, we, um, I told her about the project, you know, the idea I had in mind. Um, I came up with this dope track. And it was, yeah, so, yeah, I came up with this dope track, shot it over to her, she wrote the hook, you know, worked on my lyrics or whatever, and we actually, I would say for at least four to six months, we made it a point to make sure that that thing was right. Yeah, uh, as like, you should. And so, one of the things that we've, um, we were complimented on is the production was, you know, 100% solid. Yeah. And so now, you know, the TV, uh, the uh, the project is on syndicated TV networks. Nice. Um, it's still making its rounds. I'm still looking forward to doing a remix with Miss Crystal Renee. Yes, yeah, speak uh, that. <laughs> Claim it. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm going to be, I'm going to take it a step further. I think it'll be a better soundtrack than the one that they have for Zatima. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean no disrespect. Shoot your shot. Yeah, but it's, it's a better soundtrack. It, it is what it is. So the song is available for everybody to go to check out on Absolutely. all the digital platforms. Absolutely. Everywhere. Uh, My Fatima uh, by 4, 4G uh, featuring Sharifa Nyan. Uh, you can go you know, directly to both our websites. Mine is uh, 4GRapMusic.com. Hers is actually SharifaNyan.com. And all our social media is all the same. Uh Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, 4G Rap Music, spelled out four, the number four, letter G, R-A-P-M-U-S-I-C. And hers is uh, Sharifa, S-H-A-R-I-F-F-A-N-Y-A-N. Uh, all across the board, like I said, the website and our social media. It's a real dope track. The visual is even, you know, uh, uh, hotter. Um, it was uh, about my fifth or sixth uh, video, uh, Will Thompson, dope, um, uh, dope videographer. He he did his thing on the the visuals and so forth, and a hundred percent professional. Um, I'm looking forward to the next couple ones I got going on. I, I don't want to say too much about the other projects, but um, yeah, man, man. Um, well, I will say this here because I, I do, you know, I don't want to hold back too much, yeah. but. Uh, so, me and Scrappy, we're actually, you know, working on a project. Um, hopefully, we can get it recorded in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, a joint called Ready to Rumble. Nice. Yeah, uh, that's going to be pretty dope. I already got ideas about the <laughs> visual in my head with that there. And also, me and uh, Lil G, Gary Jenkins. Okay. Lee Singer of the R&B group Silk. Yeah. Uh, my title, my third studio album is entitled He Motions. Got you. Uh, basically, it's uh, basically a man's feelings, yeah. Or from his point of view, but he's actually gonna be featured in that as well too. And so, uh, yeah, I got some things coming down the pipe. I see it. You working? Congrats on everything too, like for sure. Because you know, in the time that we've met, I've just seen you stay so consistent, and that's what I like because it keeps me motivated when I see other people that are doing the things that I love to do and they're being so consistent. It, it lights a fire up under your butt, like get up and go do it. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. Um, I appreciate everything from you. Make sure everybody one more time where they know where to follow you on your socials. Absolutely. You want me to look at you or look into the camera, look into the camera this time. All right. So again, it's your boy for G. You can follow me on all social media platforms, uh, YouTube. Be sure you subscribe to my channel, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, TikTok. Uh, 4G Rap Music, that's the number four, letter G, R-A-P-M-U-S-I-C. I don't want to forget my sister, Sharifa Nyan. Hers is the same, um, all the same platforms. Sharifa Nyan, uh, dot com is the website, uh, spelled out S-H-A-R-I-F-F-A-N-Y-A-N.
Again, the title of the joint is in, uh, entitled My Fatima. Uh, all social media platforms. Dope. Check it out. Yeah. Most definitely. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Both of ours. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You got to plug all that in. Yeah. Anybody you want to shout out to? Yeah. Uh, definitely the home team, my wife, my, my kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know, you know, uh, probably want me home a little bit more, but <laughs> hey, I'm out here in these streets. You know, everything I do, I do for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, my daughter. Seven years old. She, I, I just told her today, um, everything I do, I do for her. That's right. It is, it, that's what more bigger than me. you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my sons, I haven't forgotten about you all. Uh, even though y'all off doing y'all own thing, I still love you. Uh, <laughs> my siblings, my mom, um, just you know, uh, distant family, near and far. I love all y'all. My fans, uh, y'all really, uh, like I said, get to know me. Um, outside of music, and um, I say I definitely look to grow with y'all for the years to come. For sure. Last but not least, we live. Industry's, Industry's most wanted. Most Big shout out to Ford G in the wanted. building. Go ahead and tell them what makes you the industry's most wanted. I'm the industry's most wanted because I'm the realist. I say I, I'm the realist because I am 100% genuine. And like I said, uh, my goal is not to impress my goal is to impact. Mm. Once you get the logistics behind that, there is a difference. So that's what makes me industry's most wanted. That was perfect. I love it. Give me some more love, man. Yeah. Boom. This is my bro right here. We rocking for a lot of time. Appreciate so, you being here. I thank you for having me. Of course. We about to hear y'all. All right.